Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Stevie, and welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. Just dandy, as always. <clears throat> the show with us, your hosts, Stevie and Aki. I thought we were going to do uh, the awkward intro where you're like, I'm your host, Stevie. And then I go, and I'm also your host. Okay. This is good. Uh, no, let's never have it be the same. <laughs> we should always let it be. I just, that's good. This is great. And welcome to set phasers a highly illogical star trek podcast we're killing the game as always and today <laughs> uh it is star date 3160601.8 and we're discussing uh lower decks season one episode six entitled terminal provocations it sounds uh sounds scary and terminal could be at an airport. A provocation at an airport. Uh, it's no moist vessel, that's for sure. But it'll get us through an episode. Thank the Lord for that. No more moist vessels, says I. Praise the Lord for no more moist vessels. Off mic, we should have a discussion about that. Uh, someone who brought up moistness to me this week. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Shall we discuss today's... Yeah, let's not even... You know what? I'd rather not remember it. Uh, let's get into the episode. Let's run it down. It's time to run it down. <laughs> Can you run it down for me? What just happened? Can you run it down for me? Okay. Terminal Provocations. Episode 6, Season 1 of Lower Decks. It starts out like just any other day on the Cerritos. Why, there's a bit of a standoff over some wreckage from like this 23rd century cargo ship called the Antares. Uh, the, there's like these Drukmani who discovered it and they think that they have the rights of salvage. And then there's obviously the Cerritos who are like, well, listen, it's a Starfleet vessel. We, we, this is our stuff. We can give you a finder's fee. The Drukmani are not happy about it. They want to fight about it. Captain Freeman's like, oh, no, we are Starfleet. We don't fight. We're going to do our best to respect each other. Uh, and that only upsets the Drukmani. Lieutenant Shax, of course, the, oh. Lieutenant Shax, of course, the uh, the gung-ho Bajoran tactical officer is begging, quite literally begging, to shoot them out of the sky Captain Freeman won't let it happen, but she does put the Cerritos on yellow alert and says that the crew is ready if anything goes down. Meanwhile, in the mess hall, Ensign Fletcher, who we met in the cold open, uh, he's chugging cantaloupe puree. Uh, He's trying to beat some sort of record. I think he's chugging like literal liters of it uh, straight out of the replicator. And all the lower decks people are cheering. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Mariner is among them. And as she's cheering, she steps backward and she bumps into Dr. Tiana, uh, who's eating some nachos and knocks the doctor, uh, who is like a, a anthropomorphic sort of cat person, into their nachos. And then t- Dr. Tiana's super upset and she turns around. And she's like, Marin, are you blah, 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 blah. Yes. So and so. Do you know how hard it is to clean nacho cheese out of fur in a sonic shower? And... uh She's like, oh, it's fine, Mariner, because you're such an insubordinate. If you want to goof around, why don't you go work at Starbase 80? And it was like, ooh, ooh, Starbase 80. And then they could get into like postures like they're probably going to fight maybe or something. I don't know. But then Ensign Fletcher shows up and he's like, hey, Dr. Tiana, here's a hot towel. And the, the doctor takes the towel, wipes it off. And then he's like, and I also got you this fresh thing of nachos with some carnitas. You got to try them. And so that, that uh, sort of dispels the... 
the animosity between them as the doctor walks off mumbling about disrespect. And then Fletcher is all chummy. And he's like, oh, we're all in Starfleet and we're the best of the best. And he puts his arms around Mariner and Boimler. It's like, we're all great here, even Boimler. And they laugh, ha, 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 as they walk out. Meanwhile, Tendy and Rutherford are just sitting down for lunch. And Tendy's wondering, hey, what's going to be in the wreckage of the ship? I'm so curious. And Rutherford's like, yeah, it's going to be really exciting. Probably once we get this all sorted out, we'll go on a spacewalk to do all the inventory. And then Tendy gets really freaked out because it turns out she never finished her spacewalk uh, c- credits, her, cl- her spacewalk class. <laughs> she never did her. Yeah, she never did her spacewalk final or something. She just got a C or a B or something like that. And she was like, you let it slide. And so she's freaked out because she doesn't know how to do it. And she doesn't know how to use the magnetic boots. And she's afraid she'll float off into space. And the Rutherford's like, hey, if you're so worried about it, I have a little holiday program that can help you out. And Tendy's like, great, that would be wonderful. So they head off to the holiday. Meanwhile, Mariner, Boimler, and Fletcher. Whew. Mariner, Boimler, and Fletcher are working on isolinear cores. And they're like taking out the chips and putting in the new ones. You know, it's pretty grunty, boring work. But Mariner looks at the time and worry, is worried that they're going to miss the choo-choo dance party. Apparently, there's a choo-choo dance party featuring some sisters whose name I forgot to write down. But they're apparently infamous for their choo-choo dance. And they're going to run out because it's going to take forever. And then Fletcher's like, you know, what, guys, you're so excited about that choo-choo dance party. I'm such a good guy. You know, he and Boimler went to Academy together. He's like, you know what? Why don't you guys just take off? I can handle this. Enjoy the party. And I'll see you guys later. And they go, oh, we couldn't possibly. And he's like, no, 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 no. It's all, we're all Starfleet. We're here for each other. Go, you guys go out of here and I'll take care of these things. And so they run off and they're super excited. And also, for some reason, I wrote down Boimler made t-shirts. Meanwhile, on the holodeck, Rutherford and Tendi uh, enter the holodeck and they meet for the first time, the most infamous of Lower Decks characters. The one, the only, Badgie. Badgie is, um, for any of us who used <laughs> Microsoft Word in the mid to late 90s, he's Clippy, right? Basically. Yes. Yeah. Can I help you? I think his name was Clippy. I don't know. Oh, because that's right. Because he was a paperclip, wasn't he? Can I? Looks like you're trying to write a, a, a resume. Can I help you with that? And that's exactly what Badgie is. He's a Starfleet badge with arms and legs and eyes and a smile. And he's like, can I teach you a lesson? And apparently Rutherford has created Badgie so that you can, any course you could have taken at the Academy, you can retake in the holodeck. So he tells Badgie to load up the spacewalk program. And it takes Badgie a bit of time to load. He actually has one of those like progress bars in his midsection. You can see it takes him a while to load, which is ridiculous because that was never a, a Star Trek thing. But those of, again, for those of us who grew up in the 90s watching TNG, we know exactly what that kind of progress bar is about. Because that's like of the computers of the time. And the computers of today. It's true. There are still progress bars. But you remember like <laughs> opening a 400 word article on <laughs> something used to take 12 minutes. Yes. Badgie eventually loads the spacewalk program and they're in their spacesuits floating. And then Tendi has a weird moment with her mag boots and they wind up stuck together. And they have a little cute, oh, we're stuck together. ha <laughs> ha. And then Badgie returns and he's like, can I teach you a lesson? And Rutherford is like, okay, load up the spacewalk program thing so we can do some, move some debris around. But then Badgie takes super long to load this time. And even Tendi's like, well, look at him work in there. It's, he's a little slow. And Rutherford's like, you shouldn't be this slow. This sucks. He's very frustrated that his program is not working super well in front of Tendi. And so he starts cursing at Badgie and then eventually like kicks him and says, you stupid program. And then, and, but it works. And Badgie, boom, boom. Flips over and he says, you know, thanks, Badgie. And he goes, thanks, so I'm happy to help. But then as they go off to do their spacewalk, the camera zooms in on Badgie and his smile becomes slightly more of a rictus grin. Anyway, after the choo-choo dance party, Boimler and M- Mariner exit super excited because they're like, oh, my God, the choo-choo party was great. And then at the end, they added one more chew and it became the choo-choo chew party. So moving. Uh, it was crazy. But they find Fletcher still in the same hallway but passed out amongst all the tools. And when they when they wake him up, he's like, oh, I was attacked, and someone took one of the cores, and 
I'm, he's worried about I'm going to be court-martialed or something because I lost the cores and and now the ship is being you know bombarded and and if they do any kind of shield diagnostic they're going to know that one of these cores is missing so we got to figure out who and so they're like we're going to help you out we're all Starfleet here hoorah we're going to figure out who did it so they're like who's you know he tells the story of someone sneaking up on him and and phasering him and he passes out and so they must have stolen him. they wonder who would be sneaky enough to move through the ship and do such a thing and they all say delta squad the overnight team so they go to visit delta squad a little bit of a i have described it as like a west side story style standoff with a little bit of talking back and forth and like oh looky here it's beta squad yada 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 but it eventually comes out that they were also at the Choo Choo dance party and also were moved to tears when the third Choo was added and it became a Choo 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 dance party. So it wasn't Delta Squad. And as they are discovering that, kabooshabooosh, the ship shakes. Why? Because meanwhile, up on the bridge, the Drukmane have are tired of the tractor beam tug of war they have been having with Sarita. So they've reversed their tractor beams and they're now basically throwing debris at the Cerritos. This normally wouldn't be a big issue because the shields would hold, but for some reason, the shields are getting depleted faster than normal. I wonder what that could be about. Debris hits the ship, and it causes all the systems, like electricity, travels through all the systems, and things go crazy. And everyone's like, oh, they're messing up our internal systems. Well, just so happens that two people are floating around in space in the holodeck when that happens, and then the safety protocols are disabled, and suddenly they can't get end the program, and then Badgie comes alive, and he attacks Rutherford, and he's like, you can't get away from me, blah, 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 and uh, he starts choking and trying to, he, like, rips the environment suit, but then Tendi and Rutherford are able to flee behind an asteroid, and then Rutherford says, okay, take us to computer change scenery to Bajoran Marketplace. So they go to Bajoran Marketplace and they throw in some ropes to disguise themselves, but Badgie is still following them and he's like viciously and, and unscrupulously murdering innocent Bajorans in the, in the holodeck and he's screaming the whole time, I'm going to wear your skin and all this stuff about killing them and all this stuff. And so they're like, we got to run. So they go running up the, the, the mountain up to the high temple. It's one of those like ridiculously high mountains, like with a temple at the top and it's like stairs, you know, just thousands and thousands of stairs. Why am I telling you this story? Like it's a story that I, that happened to me. <laughs> Did it? Did you have a dream about Badgie? Yes. Well, full disclosure, everybody, I took a 10 minute nap before this episode and I did have a weird dream about lower decks, but we'll come back to that some other time. <laughs> Where was I? Oh yeah. I just wrote, I'm going to wear your skin. Meanwhile. Oh, I did a different thing. This is not super important, but maybe people will be interested. Instead of my normal note taking, I named the the, the scenes, and uh, the last one was called Drickmani Debris, and this one is called Fletcher and Fletcher, because they decide we're gonna okay, we're gonna have to sh- search the whole ship and find out if it wasn't Delta Squad who took it. And so they go back to their quarters and they're trying to find their like scanners to find out if there's an alien on the ship that must have attacked Fletcher and taken it. Maybe the Drickmani in an attempt to weaken the shields. And as they're looking for their stuff, Boimler sees that the core is sitting on Fletcher's bunk. And then Fletcher tries to play it off. He's like, oh, aliens, they're framing me. Uh, And then they're both like, come on, man, that's ridiculous. Why did you lie to us? And he's like, okay, here's what happened. Uh, He was bored. He was tired. And he thought it could go faster if he were smarter. And so he decided to hook his brain directly up to one of the cores in an attempt to create a sort of unity with the computer and shocked him and everything went crazy and he wound up ripping the thing off of his head and he broke the core unit after it had made like a connection to his brain and then he got scared and he peed himself apparently and then he made up the story about being attacked and anyway he's like you gotta help uh I don't want to be court-martialed. Help me out. Uh, they're going to kill me for this, and then we're going to die because of the drug body and all this stuff. And then Mariner and Boimler are like, listen, we can repair the thing. You just need to tell us the truth next time. And then he's like, oh, no. Instead of repairing it and putting it back, why don't we say that a Q showed up? So, well, uh, no, that's later, actually. Because before that happens, the core actually is, all, like Badgie, becomes semi-sentient. And it has like the brainwave patterns of Fletcher. And so it wants to be smarter. And so it's eating technology and turning itself into a giant technology technology monster. And it's demanding information. And so it starts attacking everyone. And it's crazy. So as it starts adding stuff to its body, Fletcher's like begging them to fix it. And that's when he comes up with the whole thing about like, why don't we let it beat us up a bunch 
and then tell everyone that a Q showed up and did this because everyone will believe that. And Boimler and Mariner are like, that's ridiculous. And he's like, you got, he basically threatens them. Uh, he's like, I'll tell them you did it. You know, he, he, he comes, he goes completely anti Starfleet all of a sudden. This wonderful, warm, uh, warm towel, Carnitas recommending, shoulder grabbing, go on ahead, guys, and party while I take care of the work. Fletcher turns into a self preserving, terrified, um, Machiavellian coward. Uh, and so uh, they have to tie him up in order to stop him from preventing them from trying to take care of the core. But meanwhile, the core is like grabbing more stuff because it's got Fletcher's brainwaves. It wants to be smarter. So it's eating all this technology and it's getting bigger. And it's like a giant spider with legs and stuff. And they're trying to wrap it up and they're trying to get it to a transporter and send it out to space, but that's not going to work because it's gotten too big, but they managed to trick it into going into one of the airlocks by throwing a tricorder in and it goes, Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. And then they throw it out into space and they're like, whew, that worked. However, space, the hard vacuum of space does not kill this, Quasi Fletcher core. Instead, it floats over to the Drukmani ship, burrows its way in, and starts destroying it. Well, that's a relief for everyone on the bridge because they were all, you know, the shields are basically down to zero and they had been having debris thrown at them. And uh, Captain Freeman had basically given Shax the order go ahead and aim at their core, but then the weapons were down. But then this weird thing gets on the ship and basically destroys it. Meanwhile, on the holodeck, a totally different operatic drama is taking place. Tendi and Rutherford are running up the stairs. Badgie's running after them, but he's getting tired. And they're wondering, oh, gosh, he's being affected by the state of the program. He's hot and tired and he can't get up the stairs. And so they're like, maybe if we can't, if we can tire him out, then maybe we can freeze him out. And so Rutherford changes it to like some kind of frozen snowscape. And they keep trying to run from Badgie, but he's still, he's like doggedly holding on. And then Rutherford sends Tendi forward. And he's like, I'm sorry, I just wanted to impress you and all this stuff. And then he turns back and confronts Badgie and they fight. There is a wonderful, wonderful, the fight begins with, I don't know if you noticed this, but it's an Easter egg. The double fisted punch is how Rutherford decides to begin that fight against Badgie. And they fight, boom, boom, boom. There's a knife, and you know, the thing with the knife and it's holding it. And they punch and the twisting the thing. And then, uh, you know, Badgie gets the upper hand and he starts to be bloodies Rutherford. But then finally the program kicks in and Badgie starts to freeze, and then the tables are turned, and Rutherford's holding Badgie, and he's like, oh, Badgie, and Badgie is still trying to fight, but he's too weak, and he's like, I'm going to wear your skin, I'm going to kill you, and eat your heart, <sighs> and Rutherford's like, shh, no, 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 don't worry, and then he snaps Badgie's neck, and then he cries out, no! It's worth mentioning that Badgie refers to Rutherford as father. All of this was wonderful, uh, and it made me laugh even upon watching it now three times. In any case, that's just when all the other stuff happens with the core going and destroying the Dothraki ship and everything getting stabilized. And so the safety protocols get reestablished and Badgie disappears and then reappears as normal Badgie. And he's like, hey, can I teach you a lesson again? And then Rutherford and Tendi are like, oh, no, uh, we'll get out of here. Uh, we'll see you later, Badgie. And he's like, well, if you need me, I'm always here. And then as the doors close, he says to no one, I'm always here. Meanwhile, uh, oh no, I forgot the dude's name. Who's the, who's the like number one? His name is like Ransom. Oh, Ransom. I was gonna say Jack Strongman. I think it's like Ransom slash Handsome. I'm gonna guess that's why it's one of something yeah. silly like that. Also, Ransom sounds like you know I'm gonna ransom. It's like a because you know I don't know. It sounds like a hi. I'm Jack Ransom and I'm here to save the day. I'm looking at my like own muscles. Jack Reacher or mm -hmm. one of those stupid. Tom Cruise yeah, movies. Exactly. Exactly. And sing songs about my month in Barcelona. Uh, <laughs> uh, where was I? <laughs> I did this out of order because they, they happened at the same time. Oh, yes. Uh, all that's settled. And then Ransom comes down with the team to confront Mariner, Boimler, and Fletcher. And Fletcher's like, uh, if you, I'm going to blame it all on you guys if they come for me. I'm not going down. I'm not going to get court martial. And if they do, I'll, I'll say it was you and we'll all go down. So then when Ransom comes and says, you better have a good explanation for this. Mariner steps up and she's like, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Smash cut to them in the conference room and everyone's celebrating as uh, Fletcher gets a second pip and a promotion and a transfer to the USS uh, Titan. Yes, the USS Titan which is, you know, sort of Boimler's big dream. I guess that's the big, you know, elite ship that Boimler wants to be on. Because that's the one the that Riker captains, I believe. 
yeah, uh, which I think becomes relevant in, in but a few episodes, <laughs> if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> uh, Fletcher gets a promotion. Uh, he gets a second pip. He gets to go to the Titan. You know, Boimler, it's bittersweet, but at least they get rid of Fletcher because obviously he is a loose cannon and uh, a liability. And Mariner's like, well, he's out of their hair. Also, one of the cute things about this episode is that Mariner and Boimler realize that they make a good team together at last when they when they really work together and don't annoy the crap out of each other. And then fast forward to the very end of the episode, uh, six days later, after his transfer, Fletcher is <laughs> fired from the Titan for throwing garbage directly into the warp core because he thought that that was fine. And uh, Mariner and Boimler pretend that a cue is preventing them from hearing him or that he's entering some sort of time warp. And they go back to enjoying their lives, Fletcher free. And that is episode six of season one of Star Trek Lower Decks. Well, okay, so do we have any Easter? Oh, sorry. Do we have any Easter eggs? Because that's. Uh, yeah, we got a couple. Okay, well. Easter eggs. Hello, my name is Aki Burmese, and I'm live in the studio. We go now to Stevie Bands on the scene with episode six with some Easter eggs for us. Stevie, how are you? Well, hi, Aki. Hi, Aki. Good to, good to be here. Good to be here, as always. Pleasure. Yep. So we had a couple of Easter eggs. I'm just going to touch on just on, just on one or two there. Uh, the safety protocols in the holodeck mm-hmm. being disabled. Such a TNG trope. We're very, very familiar with that. You may remember from the TNG episode, That's The right. Big Goodbye. Also, possibly the binars. That was probably the first oh. instance of... Um, it wasn't quite safety protocols, but we were certainly out with the, the normal working parameters of the holodeck. Yes, totally. So yeah, there, yeah. Were, there were a good few episodes in TNG where the safety protocols were not working. And I think they extended that. It was always fun when they extended that to different... Um, of course. It was a nice episode when you sat down and you're like, holodeck. we're going to spend this episode in wherever. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, quite what fun. I, I had a couple of nice moments where, because obviously this is sort of, I, I almost felt this episode was touching on whether this was canon or not. And because you had, you know, a couple of people that, that go out with mm-hmm. the regular, what we know as Starfleet people. So, for instance, here was Fletcher, who is not your regular Starfleet material. And you even had Mariner going, you know, we're Starfleet, blah, 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 blah. And you also had Captain Freeman saying, we're Starfleet, and really underlining what Starfleet is and where we're saying, I think, with Lower Decks, hey, this is canon. Yes. Um, and I think Mike McMahon has been very clear about, hey, this is canon. So that was definitely one. And I think we had a couple of little Easter eggs of uh, Q. Q was definitely referenced very heavily in this episode. So I'm just going to touch on those three because I think you could go on all day with all of the Easter eggs in mm-hmm. Lower Decks. Mm-hmm. But those are my mm-hmm. favorite. Mm-hmm. So back to you, Aki. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Yes, Stevie. Thank you very much. And now we only have time in our program left for a little something we call the quotable moments. Quotable moments. Yeah, I had a few quotable moments. Uh, one I sort of mentioned in the rundown, I really enjoyed when Tiana says, do you know how hard it is to get cheese out of fur in a sonic shower? Which is, oof, can't even imagine. I really liked when uh, they go and confront the Delta team squad, Delta shifters, and they're starting to fight. And I think one of them says something like, uh, uh, they're talking about how they were at the dance, but Fletcher doesn't, even though Mariner's like, yeah, you guys were at the dance. Fletcher is like, you know, obviously he's still trying to hide something. So he's like, yeah, we're gonna, you were in a dance, we're going to fight with this. And then one guy says something like, you want to dance? I'll take you to the dance. I'll pick you up at your mom and dad's house. And then Fletcher screams, you don't talk about my dad. Which I just thought was super, so childish and funny. <laughs> and then, oh, uh, finally, uh, speaking of uh, the holodex thing, uh, I had to, I had to go back and write this whole thing down. But when they're talking about when Tendi and Rutherford are talking about holodex, and he's like, "I've got a program that could teach you how to do a spacewalk." Um, Tendi's like, "Oh, the holodex. Why didn't I think of that?" And Rutherford response is, "Yeah, response is, yeah. You know, it's not just for hanging out with." Sherlock Holmes and Robin Hood and Sigmund Freud and Cyrano de Bergerac and Einstein and Da Vinci and Stephen Hawking and Socrates, which that's all referential. Yes, that's true. Although I think Robin Hood was not a 
holodeck episode. I think that was a Q thing. So some of these that were, might be true, were yeah. you know, I get it. But And they also didn't bring up oh, was Mark Twain? Was that actually a time travel episode? That was not a holodeck episode. That was kind of a that was the very I think that was towards season seven and that was remember it was like a fistful of daces. Oh my god, that's not that's nerdy. Very nerdy. Well done, you. Thank you. <laughs> it was fistful of daters where they go back in time and Guinan's yes. there and they've got the weird people with the snake staff thing. Right, because Guinan's like, this is not the first time we met Picard. Yeah. And then that was where Mark Twain was. So that was a genuine, like, yeah. history thingy. That was not a, that That's was right, not a holodeck right. thing. That wasn't a holodeck thing. And of course, the seminal holodeck episode on First Contact where Picard says, the running stops here. No father. No, well, no father. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, those are my quotable moments. I also liked everything that Badgie said when he was on a murder trip. It was like, I'll yes. eat your hearts, I'll rip your eyes out, I'm going to wear your skin. Your skin, yeah. That was quite gruesome. Yes. I remember watching that going, this is quite gruesome. Yeah, the way he's like murdering all those Bajorans. He's ripping and, arms yeah, off. Just uh, killing people. But, you know, it was, it was uh, appropriately absurd for the moment. I Indeed. I sure hope Badgie comes back at some point. <gasps> <laughs> I can't do it. You just no. I can't do the I can't do that kind of inhale. I don't know what's wrong with me. Do you, you smoke though, don't you? <laughs> it's not that. It's that I have mm. a I have a gag reflex. You have a glottal thing. I don't like to sudden intakes. <gasps> I can breathe in <sighs> just fine. I just can't make that squeezy sound more glottal control (laughs) (laughs) it's the opposite of how I sing basically (laughs) oh dear how do you not swallow spit when you do that I know this is great for a podcast this is yeah this is great shall we go to next time let's next time on set phasers well Next time on Set Phasers, I promise you I'll have the name of the episode. Yes! Next time on Set Phasers, we'll be talking about episode seven. We'll be creeping up. There's only ten episodes in season one, so we've only got like three left. We'll be talking about episode seven of uh, season one of Lower Decks, entitled, Ooh, Much Ado About Boimler. I know I say this pretty much every week, but this might be one of my favorite episodes. Uh, it's a joyful romp uh, through uh, transporter accidents, as I recall. Another another Trek trope. Another Trek trope. So uh, thank you for joining us. Please join us next week for that. If you enjoy the program, you can catch us uh, any Monday. Uh, we drop our new episodes wherever your podcasts come from. You can also go back and listen to some old podcasts. We've covered the first three seasons of Star Trek Discovery in total. And the first season of Star Trek Picard in total. Uh, I think that's everything we've done. I think so. And nearly the the full season of uh, Lower Decks. And nearly, we've nearly finished the full season of Lower Decks. So, uh, yes, please find our podcast, our podcast. Tell your friends about it. Rate and subscribe. All the things. Just send people. Yeah. More nerds, please. Uh, you can, of course, find us. We are at Set Phasers Podcast and at Set Phasers on Instagram and Facebook. And Aki, you can tell the people. Tell the people about our Patreon program where they can join us and, and watch Star Trek with us. I'm going to tell you all about it. If you want to support our continuing mission to discover what else Star Trek has in store for us, well, listen here, partner. You take a fistful of datas and you go on down to patreon.com slash set phasers and you throw a couple coins up on the bar and you can become one of our patrons, pa- patrons, <laughs> patreons, <laughs> Uh, yeah, we do like a monthly, uh, like on a Sunday afternoon, we'll get together on uh, like Netflix watch party or yeah. something and watch one. Usually, usually winds up being two header. episodes, yeah. yeah, of some sort of Star Trek. We need to pick. We need to pick we one for one. for June. But yes, please uh, support us and join us. Uh, we have several tiers available, and uh, you know, they, apparently there's going to be merch someday. Yes, I think there's. I think there is available merch actually already. I will post something to that. But join our Patreon and you can you can find out more about us and just be part of our nerdy Star Trek community. That's right. Well, thank you so much for listening. I'm Stevie Manns. And I'm I don't have anything fancy to say, Aki Burmese. And you're you're what? the other one. 
And I, oh, and I'm the <laughs> other one. And this has been Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Computer. End program. Mm-hmm.